Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. As we continue to study through the Bible, we're in the book of of Isaiah, and we're going to talk about Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel, the prophets. We call them the major prophets. We're moving to the minor prophets. I believe that we're living in a very prophetic season. So what I want to do with the major prophets, and as we move through these books, is to make sure that we understand the power of prophecy, the power of prophecy, and why we should be in tune like never before with prophecy. So it is very important that we understand that. Now when we come to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet Isaiah, called the eagle eyed prophet if you will, Isaiah, very powerful, very powerful man of God, very powerful prophet. In some Jewish circles, historical circles, he's considered to be the greatest of the prophets. Take time just to examine Isaiah and how he got his calling. and We see that in Isaiah chapter 6 when he is in the presence of Almighty God. There are some things that happen with Isaiah during the time that King Uzziah died. He says it and it's a very familiar, very powerful text in Isaiah chapter 6 where Isaiah declared in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And Isaiah said, he said, Woe is me, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And the Bible says the angel laid that upon Isaiah's lips. And then God said, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Very powerful call of Isaiah. Isaiah had an incredible call because... It was a question asked, whom shall I send or who will go for us? God asked a question. Isaiah immediately, automatically, he raised his hand. He volunteered. That's very powerful. We see when when God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, I can't speak for I'm a child. You know, we call Moses. We see Moses saying, Lord, send somebody else. But the prophet Isaiah, when he hears the voice of God, he declares, here am I. What a surrendered heart. Here am I. Lord, send me. Very powerful prophet. He prophesies concerning some very, very major things that we're going to talk about that leads into our day. And that's the day and time that we live in. And we definitely want to look at that. So as we enter into the prophets, we want to talk about just just the power, the power of prophecy and why prophecy is so powerful. The one thing that we must understand about prophecy is that Jesus said to his disciples, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. I'm going to tell you before it happens. So when it happens, you will know that I am he. And that's what prophecy is. Prophecy is an incredible, incredible way of verification. And that's why the Bible is such an incredible book, because it talks about things that hadn't happened yet, things that were going to happen in the future, hundreds thousands of years in the future, and they all came true. The Bible, when it speaks, we see the results of it. And I want to go through some of those things that was declared by Isaiah, and we see that happened centuries later, millennium later, and we're still living for some of these prophecies, especially when we get to the book of Daniel. So it's, it's a fitting time that we deal with the prophets in the Bible. Now, we've heard so much about prophets and prophecy, and and we can hear so many things today. But everything that we hear today, we must, we must go to the Word of God for validation. If there's any conflict with the Word of God, then we know it is not of God. God is not the God of confusion. 
God doesn't say one thing and then he changes. So that's why it's so important to know God's word. Because when we get a chance to really study God's word and and we reminisce on his word, we meditate on his word, we find his character. The more we study God's word, the more we begin to understand God. And there's some things that you can hear and automatically you say that's not God. When you know a person, when you really know a person intimately, and you might hear something about that person, you automatically say that's not him, I know him. Or that's not her, I know her. So it is with God. We study the word of God. And as we study the word of God, God's will is revealed to us, not just in scriptures, but God's will is revealed to us in our own lives. So Isaiah is going to help us. Jeremiah is going to help us. Ezekiel and Daniel is going to help us. The minor prophets are going to help us. And the thing, reason why they call them minor prophets is because those are the shorter uh, prophetic books. So they are called the minor prophets. But we're going to look at the prophets as we uh, bring to a close the Old Testament and get ready to get started on the New Testament. So when we look at Isaiah, we see his calling was uh, an incredible calling. We see his willingness to say, Lord, here am I. Send me. And that is powerful. Um, very powerful. It kind of remind me of Acts chapter, Acts chapter 9. When the Lord called Paul, and the Bible says that Paul says, uh, what would you have me to do? That Those are incredible, incredible uh, experiences that we have access to through the word of God that immediately, I mean, when you've done something your whole life and you've thought one way your whole life and you've seen it like that all your life to make an incredible turn like that, that is that is. That is one of the greatest miracles that can ever happen in a person's life. So Isaiah, just his ability or his willingness, not so much ability, but his willingness to surrender to God, his willingness to say to God, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. If you want me to go, here I am. I will go. God didn't even ask Isaiah to go. He said, who shall we send? Well, we look at the other, some of the great men in the Bible that he asked, and there was not a willingness to go forward. In Isaiah chapter 1, there are some verses here that I believe set the tone in the book of Isaiah, and that is in chapter 1, verses 18 through 19. Uh, God talking to Israel through the prophet Isaiah. And I believe that we live in a generation that Isaiah lived in. We live in a generation that is a very wicked generation. And wickedness is going against what God has declared. We don't get a chance to define what wickedness is. We don't get a chance to define what sin is. The Bible does. We don't get a chance to vote on that. The courts don't get a chance to vote on that. The Supreme Court, we don't get a chance to determine what is sin and what is not sin. Only one person gets gets the opportunity of who does that, and that is the king of the kingdom, and that is God himself. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser, and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So God has said some things are sin and Isaiah saw a very wicked generation, a very wicked group of people that he had to uh, reach out to and try to reach for God. Isaiah prophesied through the reign of Isaiah, Jothan, Ahag, Ahaz, Hezekiah. These are the kings of Judah. So he prophesied through these four kings. He was definitely a major prophet. But in verse number 18 of the book of Isaiah, 
It says this, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And we know the history, what happened with the Assyrians and what happened to Israel because of their disobedience. So they did rebel against God. But in, in the midst of all that, God showed incredible, incredible grace and mercy. He says here, come let us reason together. That is an incredible statement. That God would sit down at the table with man and begin to talk to us and begin to tell us and show us and come into a conversation with us about what we're doing and say, so let's just talk about it. Let's reason it out. Let me see what, what, what you call uh, fun, joy. Let me see what you call peace. And let's examine that. And then let me show you what I call peace. So God is willing to come into a conversation with mankind. He's willing to sit down with mankind and, and tell mankind, let us just talk about it. Then he says, look, your sins could be as scarlet. I can make them white as snow. They could be red like crimson. I could make them like wool. So you see that God says it doesn't matter how messed up you are. doesn't matter how deep in sin you are. God is looking for them to give him an opportunity for redemption, to redeem them, to keep the enemy from coming, from the sword of the Assyrians that, that is going to come against Israel. He, he is saying to them, I, I'm giving you a way out. But if you got to be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. Now notice who he says, willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. So he asked us, now you got to get your will. Your will. Line up our wills with God's will. What is God's will for my life? What is God's will for this time in my life, this season? What is God's will for this time on the earth? What is God doing? How is God moving? So he says, now, if you, if you be just willing, if you just be willing and obedient. See, sometimes we have those that are present, but they are not available. See, you can be present and not available. It's kind of like in school, the teacher will call the roll and say, you know, here, call your name, and you would say here, or you would say present. Many people are present at church. Many people come to church and are available. They're not available to be disciples of the Lord because God never told us to make church people. He told us to make disciples. And a disciple is, an, is t a total different creature from a church gore. So the Lord has said, I want you to be willing to be and obedient. Then I'll give you the fruit of the land. I'll give you the good of the land. But if you do not, if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. And of course we know Israel decided to rebel and the sword did devour many of them for mobile giving text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242 the axe church in north little rock is located at 1224 franklin street morning glory begins at 8 a.m on sunday mornings sunday school begins at 8 30 a.m and for a powerful word Join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.